The ravaging of Africa has been enriching Europe and North America for more than 500 years. First, European empires imposed slavery and colonialism on the continent. After 1945, the United States took over as the dominant neo-colonial power. Through the Pentagon and the CIA, the U.S. government has fueled 14 wars in Africa. It is American invasion, but the U.S. role is everything. The U.S. has used the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund to systematically demolish African economies and health and education sectors. Par les stratégies de la Banque mondiale, les pauvres seront toujours pauvres, les riches seront this military and economic war enables the looting of Africa's resources by Western multinational corporations. Shell is into the politics of Nigeria, you know. One might say we have our independence, but economically, we are still being colonized. Washington's genocidal imperial strategy has killed more than 26 million Africans, but failed to suppress popular resistance. We have refused to die! No matter what they do, no matter what power they have. You are listening to The Ravaging of Africa, a four-part documentary series about the destructive impact of U.S. imperialism on the continent. I'm Asad Ismi. I'm Kristen Schwartz. Voices and sounds in this series were recorded at the 2007 World Social Forum held in Nairobi, Kenya. This is Militarizing Africa, the opening episode in our series. For the next half hour, we focus on the wars in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Somalia. Stay tuned. Nearly 80% of the strategic minerals the United States requires are found in Africa, including 90% of the world's cobalt, 90% of the platinum, 40% of the gold, 98% of the chromium, 64% of the manganese, and one-third of the uranium. These minerals are needed to make jet engines, cars, missiles, electronic components, iron, and steel. No industrial society can exist without these substances. Africa also accounts for 18% of U.S. oil imports, a number which is expected to rise. Africa is the most war-torn region in the world, with armed conflicts going on in nine countries. Democratic Republic of the Congo, Sudan, Ethiopia with Somalia, civil war in Ethiopia, Uganda, Chad, Nigeria, Morocco with Western Sahara, and Algeria. The U.S. has provided arms and military training to participants in all of these nine wars. Washington has done the same in another five wars that ended during 2002 to 2006. These are the long civil wars in Angola, Sierra Leone, Burundi, and Liberia, as well as that in Congo Brazzaville. According to William Hartung, co-author of the report Deadly Legacy, U.S. Arms to Africa and the Congo War, the U.S. sent one and a half billion dollars in arms and training to Africa during the Cold War years, 1950 to 1989. This, quote, set the stage for the current round of conflicts in the region, unquote. He further points out that, quote, the military skills and equipment supplied by the United States are still being used by combatants in these wars." Unquote. Following the end of the Cold War, the Clinton administration undertook a wave of new military training programs in Africa. In the 1990s, the U.S. gave military assistance to 50 countries in Africa out of a total of 53. The U.S. has four different military training programs for Africa. Since 2001, the Bush administration has doubled U.S. military aid to Africa and quadrupled U.S. arms transfers. In February 2007, Bush set up a new Pentagon command for Africa called AFRICOM. It is headquartered at the huge U.S. military base at Djibouti in the Horn of Africa, close to Saudi Arabia and Yemen. The base houses 2,000 U.S. troops, mainly special forces, as well as CIA operatives. Given its strategic location, AFRICOM's purpose appears to be control of African and Middle Eastern oil. The most destructive case of U.S. military intervention in Africa is the war in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the heart of the continent. The war has killed more than 4 million people since 1998 and destroyed the second largest country in Africa. The Congo is the richest country in the continent, holding the world's biggest copper, cobalt and cadmium deposits. The U.S.'s proxies for this genocide are Rwanda and Uganda, 
which started the war in 1998 by invading the Congo with Washington's encouragement and support and have since been looting the country's resources and sending them to the West. Oxfam called this war the world's biggest humanitarian disaster. Angola, Zimbabwe and Namibia sent their armies to support the Congo government and Burundi joined the other side. Thus began Africa's first world war involving seven armies which has further wrecked a country crushed by more than a century of Western domination. The U.S. has given arms and military training to all seven armies. Rwanda and Uganda are the U.S.'s staunchest allies in the region and Washington backed the invasion of the Congo according to Human Rights Watch. Uganda received 1.5 million in U.S. arms and military training in 1999. U.S. Special Forces have trained the Rwandan Army in counterinsurgency, combat and psychological operations. This included instructions about fighting in the Congo. To keep the war going, the U.S. has helped the other side too, with Zimbabwe getting 1.4 million in U.S. military training in 2000 and Namibia $500,000. Mfuni Kazadi is from the Congo and is Secretary General of the group Coalition for the Cancellation of the Illegitimate Deaths of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And when the war started, there were um, ships of American at Mwanda. I tell you, it is confirmed by the Angolese. And that ships, is, its mission was to um, to uh, gather all the communication for uh, Uganda's and Rwanda's army, w which were in, in Moanda and Ikitona. You see, so it is confirmed. And also, the, when the war were, 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 were going on, the American were part of the, the problem because the, uh, their authorities said that the Congo is too big, must be divided into four states. If the Congolese, if they can't find any solution for, to the war, so the Congo must be divided. So the resistance of people, that is why the, the resistance of people have caused four and two million people dead. So you see that the, the, Rwand the Rwandese were, were um, used like uh, a puppet. Huh? They put them in face to fight for the interests of the United States. Under a peace deal signed in 2002, Rwanda and Uganda formally withdrew their forces from the Congo. But fighting continues in the eastern part of the country, with Rwanda and Uganda using proxy forces to control territory and continue the looting. The United Nations has identified 85 foreign multinational corporations based in the U.S., Europe and South Africa that have been looting the resources of the Congo as the war has raged. Those include the big diamond company, De Beers, the mining giant, Anglo-American, Barclays Bank, Bayer AG, Cabot Corporation, and the Canadian mining companies, Barrett Gold and Banro. In an example of organized crime, many companies have funded military operations, thus perpetuating the war. The Congo War is a horrifying example of all three instruments used by the U.S. in its attempt to dominate Africa, military invasion, World Bank IMF economic control and Western corporate plunder. All the uh, looting material have been transferred, have been exported to the United States for nothing, you see. So the Congolese have lost everything. And there was only uh, The Hague last, last, last year who condemned Uganda to pay $10, $10 billion. But the, they said we have no power to oblige Uganda to pay that amount. So that we say, if they have condemned Uganda, Rwanda should be also condemned because they, they, they were a party of, of the invasion. Why Rwanda should uh, get away from that uh, 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 tribunal? The Congo war has displaced more than three million people, forcing many of them to flee to other countries. Women have been particularly affected by the war. Rape has been used so widely as a weapon in the war that doctors cannot believe its extent. It's estimated that 250,000 women have been raped by combatants, the victims ranging from a two-year-old to a 70-year-old. About one-third of rape victims have contracted HIV and AIDS. Millicent Okumu is secretary of the Federation of Congolese Abroad, an international organization with branches in the Congo and 11 other countries that provides resettlement services to expatriate Congolese. 
The Federation also contributes to reconstruction efforts